Today's Neville Goddard Conversation Mind Map is titled, They Appear to Reflect Your State. So everyone I connect with these days appears to be interested in discussing how others reflect our state. Or you could say it's a conversation that reflects the state I'm always in, from which others show up to discuss it. And it has been this way for many years, although more so over the recent years, since I originally discovered this idea of states through NLP back in 2001. Now, over the course of applying this, the frequency has increased because we have become aware to a higher degree as to what our imaginal activities are in relation to our experiences with others within or outside our physical presence. We're also aware now, more so than ever before, that this is one consciousness experienced as individualization for relatability through imagination. Neville says, Determine imagination, thinking from the end, is the beginning of all miracles. So at one point, I considered it coincidental that people would show up saying the same things I was imagining. And then I saw it as one consciousness being in sync, as I'm aware that it occurs everywhere now. Even if I haven't seen them physically for a while, when I run into them again, or we would meet up again, they seem to have arrived at the same conclusions in their thinking, although they may say they have gotten to these conclusions through different means. Now, rewinding a bit to an earlier stage of awareness of this, I found it a bit troubling because I was wondering why they always appeared to mirror my state, whether it was desirable or undesirable at the time. I thought I had to force myself to always be in a desired state for them to reflect it, and if I was not, they wouldn't. So there was this belief then that caused me to wonder why they would not take the responsibility from me. What I realized then about this was that the cause was within, and it is the same cause in all that appears, as there is truly one consciousness, as he says here. There is no one that is not all that is. For consciousness, though expressed in an infinite series of levels, is not divisional. I am cannot be divided. So it was always happening and thus probably always going to happen. So at some point I said to myself, I assume 100% responsibility because no matter what, they're reflecting my state, whether it be knowingly selected or unknowingly. And by that, I mean, without practicing discernment as stated in Matthew 10, 16. Behold, I send you out as sheep in the midst of wolves. So be shrewd as serpents and innocent as doves. I found this realization in the beginning a bit heavy, thinking I had to do everything. But as we've been discussing, we don't do everything. Everything is done for us. The Father within, he doeth the work, as Neville says. Not my will, but thine be done. Luke 22, 42. O my Father, if this cup may not pass away from me, except I drink it, Thy will be done. Matthew 26, 42. Nevertheless, not what I will, but what thou wilt. Mark 14, 36. This resignation is not one of blind realization that I can of myself do nothing. The Father within me, he doeth the work. What we actually do then is imagine, simply imagine, that we already are all that we desire to be and observe it occurring to play out without trying to manipulate, and others show up automatically to reflect that state. Our responsibility is to think feelingly from the end and all changes. So now accepting 100% responsibility brings us to ease as we understand what it truly means. So thus, more so in the earlier stages, I thought it was difficult. Those were only the controlling beliefs I was identified with. Watch the video I released last week discussing releasing identification to them. I'll link in the description to it. It is from these beliefs where I would conjure up people in my mind's eye arguing with them rather than thinking feelingly from the end. And by end, I mean how you truly desire to be, which thinking feelingly from the end implies that you are already that. So this imaginal act before of arguing with people in my mind was tiring, and since I was assuming that state, at times others would appear accordingly, 
to reflect that state. So I stopped it. We have no true desire to do that. It was only past beliefs playing out in mind. So we stop identifying with those beliefs and it no longer occurs. So rest assured then, it becomes a habit to think from the end, to be easily aware of what you imagine in relation to others, and if applicable, choose to think from the end, and then it becomes automatic, where you remain in your ideal state of consciousness. And if at any time, you are not thinking from the end, you are aware of it, and you think from the end. And this doesn't mean you have to think from the end all the time. Only till you feel it real. That way the suffering ceases. As in, that's the way it is now. The way you imagine it is. If anything that seems to deny shows up in the world of appearances. For example, what a person says, what a person does, a person's body language, what a person is doing online. If a person is calling you or not, regardless of these appearances, you remain in your ideal state of consciousness. So let's actually explore these and discuss how we can think feelingly from the end in regards to these. Let's start with what a person says. So words have meaning that we have assigned to them. And so when a person makes a statement or says something, which is a combination of words, by how we imagine in relation to it, we evoke certain states. Evoke means bring or recall to the conscious aspect of mind, where we are presented with a choice to accept it a certain way or not, which by this act sends the instructions to the subconscious aspect of mind to bring forth. Like for example, what Neville says here, you and I move from state to state, either deliberately by knowing what we're doing or unintentionally by falling into a state as we read the headlines of the paper, listen to the radio, or watch the TV tonight. And although you may know none of the facts, if you accept what is said, you will fall into a state and buy things you don't need. So what he's saying is that when one listens to what a person says, or reads words, sentences, etc., based on how they relate to it within, they may unintentionally, by this it is meant not a pure intention in relation to their vision, cause themselves to occupy another state. So be aware thus of what you are imagining in relation to what a person says to determine what state you are allowing yourself to enter into. Then we have what a person does. So the same, one might observe what a person does and imagine how they relate to it. And depending on what they are imagining, it can cause them to enter into another state. So again, be aware of what you are imagining in relation to what a person does to determine what state you are allowing yourself to enter into based on how you relate to what they are doing. The same is to be said about body language. We may have formed conclusions as to what body language means. And I learned this in some of the sales programs I used to be involved with. Yet when we understand what is really going on at a deeper level, we can go beyond the body language and relate it back to the state. For example, let's say if a person is making an offer in business to another and they observe their body language and conclude that based on their body language, they're not interested in a deal by which they perform an imaginal act of suggesting to themselves that they're not good enough, which causes them to enter into another state. If they didn't imagine this, they would remain in their consciously chosen state. So they could imagine ideally or not imagine anything, and they would remain in their ideal state of consciousness, provided they were in it prior to this interaction. Also, the same is to be said about what a person is doing online. Let's say in relation to a friend, family member, or whoever. If what they're doing online changes your state, it is what we are imagining as real in relation to what they do that is changing the state. They are not the cause, the cause is within. Thus, the state we are in determines how people appear in our lives, even if a person is not aware of what state they're in. And we may fluctuate through states all day long, which is why a person may show up, which we could say ideally out of nowhere. Because in that moment, even if it was just for a moment, they were in that state. 
and how they continue to appear when they show up is also determined by our state, which is a body of beliefs, which from these beliefs we are aware of how, by how it plays out precisely. As you believe, so it shall be done unto you. So you have all the power now to choose your state, and it is what we are imagining in relation to what others communicate verbally or non-verbally, say or do, that reveals the state we occupy. This is why I say keep it simple and go to the end if in doubt. Philippians 4.8 Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report, if there be any virtue, if there be any praise, think on these things. Now as you remain aware, of your imaginal activity without overthinking, you can easily remain in your state and it becomes your dwelling place. And you'll notice, like I mentioned, what a person says, what a person does, a person's body language, what they're doing online, if a person is calling you or not, it doesn't switch your state because you no longer let it. And this is a priceless way of being, to practically realize the power of imagination. So I trust you found this video to be helpful Let's go ahead and conclude this with an auto-suggestion to further encourage. You could say, I easily think feelingly in relation to what appears from my ideal state of consciousness, where all appears automatically in harmony with how I truly am, as far as my senses perceive. Each day I experience now, it's easier to be this way, as upon reflection, I acknowledge that I was, is, and ever shall be the ideal that I desire to be now. If you would like a copy of this mind map, the link is in the description. Thank you very much for watching. I'll talk with you soon. Take care.